In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Good morning. Welcome to this celebration, especially to all those who are joining us in their homes and wherever they are. This is the sixth Sunday of Easter and we continue to prepare ourselves for the coming feast of the Pentecost and also the ascension of our Lord. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relieve in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what, he, to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice came out of many possessed people and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if it be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the difficulties, let's just put it as our kind of suffering during these difficult times or during this crisis is the experience or the feeling of loneliness. We are naturally wired to be with one another, to be with our families, to be with the people that we love. And it's a fact that during this pandemic, we are kind of isolated from the people that we used to be with and uh, 
places or the situations that we used to enjoy. I could just imagine in some places or some countries, doctors and nurses and their aides cannot go to their families. They lived in the hospital for months now. That's very difficult and very challenging. For those of us here who have a family that work in the hospital, um, we see that there are, that they are, when they come home, um, in a distance, um, having to sleep in another room, having to eat apart from their families. That's a kind of painful experience for us. Not just that, um, even those that are sick themselves, I could just imagine those that are in the hospitals without visitors, without family to come and comfort them. Those that are dying and they, have, they don't have no one to uh, be there in their last moment in this life. That's a very challenging situation, very uh, difficult to deal with. And even us who are healthy and well, kind of experiencing suffering in the sense of not being able to <clears throat> be with the people that we um, kind of hung, hung on with. Um, we are not able, <clears throat> excuse me, to go to our favorite places or to go with our uh, kids to uh, some uh, fun activities. All these things have a difficult uh, kind of effect in our lives that we experience somehow a kind of uh, persecution, a kind of suffering, so much so that some of us, or even many of us, go to the streets to protest that this is enough. We cannot just kind of go on living like this. I think our readings today would help us, give us a kind of inspiration during these difficult moments because the people the characters that we encounter in the readings today experience, although not the same, but suffering, persecution in the sense, as many of us felt that we are being persecuted, kind of experiencing those uh, persecutions and difficult moments. In the first reading, the persecution of the early Christians and especially the disciples led Philip to go to Samaria. Um, if you recall, Samaria is a place not very welcoming to the Jews. They are people who live not in common with the Jewish people or the Israelites, as they say. So, there is a good witness in the midst of persecution that the disciples who experienced the recent Jesus could not just stop loving, sharing the good news, and giving hope to people. And even Peter and John also went to Samaria. In the second reading, Peter also tells the persecuted people to continue following Jesus. Um, Peter was emphasizing there is a kind of uh, suffering that we encounter even when we are <clears throat> doing good. It's a different suffering that comes out when we do something bad. But when we do something good, it's difficult. It's a very uh, a difficult experience. So Peter said, continue following Jesus. Even Peter himself had encountered suffering and he faced everything with love and justice. And just like Jesus being persecuted and died on the cross, the, the 
effect of that or the purpose is so that we all could be lead, led to God. That's the same message in the gospel reading. Because in the gospel reading, here Jesus continues his, his um, kind of farewell discourse to the disciples. And he is saying goodbye to them. But this goodbye happens before the death of Jesus. And so the disciples were already experiencing difficulties, a kind of a trial. What would happen to them when uh, Jesus would be gone, would be taken from them? Uh, how would they face everything? It's a kind of a difficult, sad situation. But Jesus promised them. Jesus assures them. Jesus says that he will be with them and he will give them hope in two ways. First, he said, he will send another advocate, the paraclete, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit that will be with them, that will guide them, that will recreate them, and that will be uh, in them. They will not be left alone. The spirit will be inside of them. Second, Jesus promised, even if he go and he would not be with them for a while, Jesus will be with them. He will come back to them and they will be together again. And that Jesus uh, fulfilled during his resurrection. So you see there the reason for the hope. You see there how they are able to continue loving, how they are able to continue with their sharing the good news, even with difficult, challenging um, times of persecution. And I think we all need to learn from that, to be inspired by this reading that we have today. So what is the cause of your hope? What would lead us into the, the experience that something is going to happen? There's hope. Hopefully, it's not thinking that you could go back again to your favorite restaurant and enjoy a dinner of uh, a good steak. Hopefully, it's not the thought that we will have, we will again come together and party together. Hopefully, it's not a thought that we could all go out again and enjoy our regular normal life. Whatever the future holds, there has to be some hope that we need to hold on to. And the readings today tell us, us it's Jesus who is risen. The hope of the apostles, the disciples, the hope of Peter, the hope of uh, the early Christians reside in that. In Jesus and in his promise. So, as we continue uh, with the uncertain times, we need to remind ourselves, when we rediscover Jesus, we can face whatever is before us. The persecution, the difficulties, the challenging times, because there is hope. And we learn to love in the midst of difficulties because of Jesus' reason. We learn to love again and again. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. On the cross, Christ surrendered his life to the Father for all men and women. Let us pray in the confidence of this surrender. For all the baptized, that we proclaim Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our towns and cities, that they pay attention to the Easter message and receive it with joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nurses and doctors, that they continue to serve and heal in the freedom of conscience, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who cannot accept the spirit of truth, that their hearts may be converted, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this Eucharistic gathering, that we love Christ and sanctify him as Lord in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the petitions we hold in our hearts, those listed in the bulletin in our book of needs. And for those remembered in our Mother's Day novena, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the parishioners of Ascension Parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us conclude our petitions with our growing in faith together prayer. Eternal, Eternal Father, Father your loving mercy sustains us as we seek deeper communion with Jesus, your Son, and with one another in our vibrant worship and loving service to one another. Grant, we pray, your blessings that our desire to transform your holy house in Tierra Santa to a more inviting, inspiring house of prayer, reflecting the splendor of your heavenly home where Jesus Christ ascended, comes to fruition, brings us closer together, and gives you greater praise, honor, and glory. In the holy name of Jesus, who with you and the Holy Spirit are God forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commanding himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving thanks he said the blessing and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Thank you. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, but, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, 
Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Announcements for all of our parishioners. We are now making plans for the reopening of the church and the diocese wants us to submit this week that uh, plan that we draw and so i'll be calling all our liturgical ministers for a zoom meeting that's the new normal now uh, hopefully you will familiarize yourself with zoom before the invitation come to you this week so we'll be having consultations with all the uh, liturgical ministers, some uh, groups in the parishes um, in general about uh, drawing a parish plan for the reopening of the church. We will try to explain everything in this meeting, why this is a kind of in a hurry. We have been informed of this uh, last Friday and the deadline is next Friday, one week to draw a plan for reopening the church. But we could do it. So we'll be, uh, I'll be uh, calling out uh, uh, meetings uh, for all uh, liturgical ministers. So um, there might be two meetings for the uh, liturgical ministers that are um, um, big in numbers, but look out for the email this week and so uh, we'll keep that rolling this week so that we'll be able to have the plans um, ready for submission to the diocese. In the meantime, let us continue that, uh, let us continue to pray that our government will help and uh, accelerate the uh, plan for reopening of public worship. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. like to extend our gratitude and thanks to all who are helping us in the live streaming thank you so much and thank you to all of you who are joining us from their homes may you have a blessed day thank you, thank you.